Uh, look at John 14. John 14. I know I've taken a little more time. I, I was actually going to divide this into two parts, but I just really can't because I want you to get a hold of this today so you can start using it. So, John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. Now, in that same passage, everybody wants to jump on that. Same passage, verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. You hear that? That's Jesus talking. That will I do. Why? That the Father may be glorified in the Son. The Father is glorified when the Son answers your prayers. So the more you pray correctly and to be heard, right, and can be heard, then that the more you can be answered and the more glory the Son gives the Father. Do you get that? Okay. Now, verse 14, he says it again. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. Now, is there any qualification in there? No. no. Now, we know the qualification is according to his will. Amen. Isn't that right? So the key is to know his will. Now, John 15, just taking you through. John 15, verse 7. If, underline if, you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Amen. End of story. Listen, you've got to stretch yourself to believe open-endedly. You get that? Don't put a question mark where God puts a period, right? Herein, herein where? In answered prayer, is my Father glorified. Now watch this. That you bear much fruit. So now notice, he is relating answered prayer to bearing much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. John 15, verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Is that what your Bible says? Yes. All right. Now look at the next verse. You are my friends if... Do you see that? You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. How are you a friend of Jesus? If you do what he has commanded. You got that? Yep. Now notice, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus is comparing him laying his life down for his friends to having the greatest love. Then he tells us who his friends are. Now whoever his friends are, that's who he laid his life down for. Yep. Sure. Do you get that? You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth, from now on, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord does, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. What's he saying? He said, you know what the Father's will is? You, why? Because I've told you everything he's told me. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. Why? That you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. And what fruit is he talking about here? Because he's still in verse 15. He's talking about answered prayer. That's one of the fruit, all right? That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Yes. See, he ties answered prayer with that fruit. Do you get that? Yes. Now, notice he's telling us to be fruitful. Where did we hear that before? Genesis 128. Yes. Be fruitful and multiply. Why? Because that's still God's will. John 16, well, verse 17 says, These things I command you, that you love one another. Now, John 16, verse 23. And in that day, now this is Jesus talking, and he says, And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Okay, now, I get this question all the time. When we pray, do we pray to the Father? Do we pray to the, pray to the Son? Do we, how do we? Okay, very simple. You pray to the Father. In the name of the Son, yep. in the name of Jesus. You got that? Yep. Now, and you are doing it according to the Holy Spirit if you are doing it according to the Word of God and accurately according to His will. Why? Because His words are spirit and they are life. Yep. You get that? Now watch. He says, In that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. 
You got that? You see how open-ended that is? Whatever you ask, in my name, he will give it you. Now watch this. Verse 24. Hitherto, up till now, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask, and you shall receive. Why? That your joy may be full. See, this all has to do with answer prayer. Now, this is the way the King James reads it. But the actual Greek, because the King James doesn't always put out the best uh, tenses. It doesn't show you the tenses in it. This is amazing. Let me, let me read it to you according here. It says in verse 23, And in that day you shall ask me no questions, okay? No, uh, most assuredly, I am saying to you, whatever you shall request of the Father, he will give it to you in view of all that I am in his estimation. Amen. You hear that? He's, he's going to give it to you in view of all that, you, that Jesus is in the Father's estimation. Yeah. It's not about, well, I don't know why God would answer my prayer. Uh, because of his son, Jesus. That's why. It's in his name. See, do you get that? And he says, now watch this. He says, up to this time, you requested not even one thing in my name. Now watch this. Be constantly making requests and you shall be constantly receiving in order that your joy, having been filled completely full, might persist in that state of fullness in the present time. Amen. Now, do you get that? He said, you hadn't asked anything in my name, but now I'm telling you, ask the Father in my name, and he'll give it to you just because of what high esteem he holds me in. Amen. Right? Now, see, this is the answer to the parable about the what people call the importunate widow that keeps knocking, keeps knocking, and they say, see, you have to keep knocking on the door, keep knocking on the door, maybe God will answer. And, and at one point, remember, Jesus also gave the illustration of the man that came to his friend's house at midnight, and the friend said, no, I'm not going to get up. My kids are in bed. Everybody's in bed. I'm not, but nevertheless, if you keep on knocking, I'll get up. And people say, see, sometimes God, we've got to convince him to do it. He don't want to do it. That's not what it's about at all. He's saying, you keep on knocking, and you'll keep on receiving. In other words, you keep, listen, and that means you pray about this thing and you receive it. You believe that you receive. Why? Because all of it has to match. Yeah. And so you pray and you believe that you receive and you get it. And then you pray again for something else and you pray and you believe and you receive and you get it. And you keep on asking. You keep doing. Why? For different things and you'll keep on receiving different things. You get it? In other words, he's saying, don't just ask once and stop. Why? Because he knows we have this mentality sometimes. Well, you know, I don't want to be greedy. You know, I've had people in the healing line. Well, I've got five things wrong, but if I can get rid of this one thing, the other four I can live with. I'm like, well, if we can fix the one, the other four that are less, we can obviously fix. Yeah. Amen? Does that, does that make sense? Amen. But see, we got to, well, you know, I just, I, he said mansions in heaven, but I just don't really want a mansion. I just want a little cabin over in glory. Okay, then you can live in my mother-in-law suite. <laughs> Why? Why? Because he wants to give you stuff. He want not, and I'm not about the things, you understand? But he wants to answer your prayers. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to prosper. Why? So that you can be a blessing to other people. Amen. He, listen, he is, he's known as El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough, not the God who is barely get along. <laughs> You've got to remember, he's got a reputation to uphold. Yeah. Amen? There are other gods out there. You understand that? They're called demons, Right? And they're all looking at how he takes care of his kids. And you don't, you think, listen, Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. Do you think he doesn't accuse God? He's going to accuse God. God, you sure don't take care of your kids. Well, I can't get them to ask me. Go on, because I, I can only do what they're asking and they don't ask. And they ask for too little or they ask for not enough or whatever it is. And Because I can guarantee you the devil accuses God. You know how I know? Because he's accused God in your own mind. Well, maybe God don't want to heal you. Maybe God's not doing that. Maybe, maybe this is, you know, he's trying to teach you something. What is that? That's the voice of the accuser yeah. trying to accuse God in your mind. You think he doesn't do that to God? You know, I don't know if he does or not necessarily because God probably doesn't listen to him. Amen? <laughs> I know I wouldn't. Amen? 